So looking at 4.5 today, uh, starting off there anyway, adding and subtracting fractions. And if, uh, as I get to going, if uh, you need me to explain something, re-explain something, maybe scroll back down because I wrote too fast. Or if you had a question about anything, just go ahead and unmute yourself and, um, you know, say, excuse me, could you, you know, blah, 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 whatever it is. Um, because since I'm sharing my screen and I'm writing on another app, I may not see you if you were to raise your hand. So if you have something that, you know, you want to interject or if you just need me to re-explain or something like that, just uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. And um, it'll be all good. So adding and subtracting fractions. So don't forget, um, in previous lecture, we talked about multiplying and dividing. Um, if I have two thirds times four fifths, all I would do is multiply across. That's eight over 15. When it comes to dividing, let's say if I had those same two fractions, but I was dividing, I'll keep the two-thirds the same. Division changes the multiplication. And then I flip the following fraction or the fraction that follows the divisional sign. Then I can multiply across. That would be 10 over 12. Don't forget, if it's possible to reduce, you are expected to do so. That 10 is 2 times 5. 12 is 2 times 6. 2 is cancel. That's 5 over 6. So we talked about that, or I sent you the lecture on section, I think it was 4 or 3, when that section is being discussed. Also, the other element of this is that if I want it, I can cancel out before I multiply. I recognize that there's a 2 in that 4 because 4 is 2 times 2. I can cancel those out. And then multiply across, and that will be... 5 over 6 because of 3 times 2. So either way, I'll get 5 over 6. Now, let me go back. I hear somebody pinging in the chat. It's not showing me anything. My screen is black. Is anybody else having that problem? Someone's in the chat saying the screen is black. Can somebody see my writings? I can see your writings. Yeah. Okay. 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 Cool. See. Okay, great, great, great. Appreciate you. Um, so you may want to go out and come back in and see if that'll help you because uh, everybody else is able to see me. Um, I am recording this, though, so I'm going to send you guys the recording of the lecture so you'll be able to review it uh, at your earliest convenience. So um, either way, you'll get you'll get a chance to see these notes again. All right. So let me go back to the share. So that's multiplication and division. So the reason why I bring those up is because when it comes to addition and subtraction, you have to have a common denominator. Yeah, I'll write that better. So adding and subtracting fractions need a common denominator. You do not need it when you're multiplying and dividing, but you have to have it when you are adding and subtracting. So if I have one fourth plus five fourths, I have the common denominators that I need for in both denominators so I can add them accordingly. So that would be 6 over 4. And then once again, if you can reduce, you are expected to do so. That 6 is 2 times 3. 4 is 2 times 2. 
Two is canceled, and that would be three over two. All right, same type of deal. We just have three fractions instead of two. So two fifteenths plus one fifteenth minus 13 over that 15. Two plus one is three minus 13 will give me negative 10 over 15. And I can reduce again. This will be two times five. Three times five. Five will cancel. Leave me with negative two-thirds. So if you have common denominators, uh, we're in a good place. We just add and subtract your numerators accordingly. All right, so the challenge often comes when we have uncommon denominators. What we will tend to look for is this common denominator. Called the LCD for short. All right, so we, uh, um, I put is, I didn't mean to put is right here. Uh, should we look for, sorry about that, look for the least common denominator. And so the least common denominator is the smallest number that each denominator can divide into evenly. So when I look at one over six plus three over four, my denominators are six and four. I want the smallest number that they can divide into evenly. I don't want the smallest number they can divide into them. So a lot of times you ask what's the LCD, people will say two. So we don't want the two. We don't want what can divide into them. We want to know what is the smallest number that both of them can divide into evenly. And that's going to be 12. Six can divide into 12, four can divide into 12. Now, by some chance you don't find the smallest number, let's say if you said 24, uh, six can divide into 24, four can divide into 24. It's not the end of the world if it's not the least common denominator or the smallest. As long as those numbers can divide into it evenly, eventually you'll still get the same answer. If you pick something larger than 12, that just means you're going to have to reduce at the end. Um, but you want a number that both six and four can divide into evenly. All right, so before we go any further, questions on that? Anybody? So your LCD is the smallest number that both six and four can divide into evenly. All right, so let's bring that down here. So we got one over six plus three over four. Now your goal is to have 12. If you said 12 is your LCD, your goal is to have 12 at the bottom of each denominator, but at the bottom of each fraction. So you ask yourself, what times six will give me 12? That'll be two. In order to keep your equivalency, whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So that first fraction would be uh, two over 12. 
Then you ask yourself, what times four would give me 12? That would be three. And once again, whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. That would be nine over 12. Now that you have your same denominators and you have the proper numerators, you can go ahead and add them together. And that's 11 over 12. All right, so I have 7 over 10 minus 1 over 5. LCD, smallest number that both 10 and 5 can divide into evenly. In this case, it'll be 10 because, of course, 5 can divide into 10, but 10 can also divide into itself. So once again, if you're saying your LCD is 10, then that means you want each denominator to turn into 10. Now the first fraction has 10 as the denominator, so it doesn't change. The second fraction, you said what times five will give you 10, and that'll be two. Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So that'll be 2 tenths. Subtract your fractions, 5 tenths. Ten is two times five. So those fives will cancel. Don't forget if the whole thing cancels out and you're left with one. So that frag one over two. All right, I see your hand. Yeah, you can go ahead and speak. Uh, is that Pitton? Is that Pettinard? I know I'm saying that wrong, right? Say again. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 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 <laughs> I just um, need to say it a little faster. What's on that? the test, do it. <laughs> yeah, on the test, would you like the, us to have the simplest form? Yes, yes, most definitely, yes. Um, so most definitely, uh, send, uh, not send, but uh, your final answer needs to be in the uh, simplest form possible. You don't have to convert it to a decimal or to a mixed number. Um, so in other words, let me go back to my screen. If your answer is 13 over 5, then that's good enough. Um, but if I had 25 over 15, just like we did with that 5 over 10, you are expected to break it down further. So, yep, yep. Cool. All right. Let's see what's next, what's next. Let's go negative 4 fifteenths minus 1 tenths. So notice this section, and I believe previous sections, uh, really didn't focus on add, subtract, and multiply, and divide, and assign numbers. If you uh, forgot those rules, um, I have other videos that I've made for previous classes. Uh, shoot me an email, I can shoot that to you. Or if you just need um, office hours or something, email, and uh, we can set that up. So just throwing that out there if you forgot your sign numbers, rules, and all the good stuff. So here we have a negative 4 fifteenths minus 1 tenth LCD. I want to be 30. So once again, the smallest number that 15 and 10 can add into evenly. 
So if my LCD is 30, that means I want 30 to be my new denominator for each fraction. So what times 15 will give me 30? That's 2. Multiply that to the top and bottom. So that will be 8. What times 10 will give me 30? That's 3. And that'll be 3 to the top and bottom. So 3 times 1 is 3. So be careful with your signs here. You have a negative 8 and a negative 3. That minus sign is the same as a negative. So you have a negative 8 and a negative 3. That's going to be a negative 11 over 30. All right, here we have negative 5 plus 3 fourths. So don't forget negative 5 as a fraction would be negative 5 over 1. My LCD is going to just be the 4. So that means I will multiply top and bottom of the negative 5 over 1 by 4, because 4 times 1 will give me 4. That would be negative 20 over 4 plus 3 over 4, which would be negative 17. All right, if you have something like this, 4 over 5 plus 3 over x, LCD would just be multiplying the 5 times the x. 5x would be that denominator. So, say what times 5 will give me 5x, and that'll be x. Do that to the top and bottom. Then what times x will give me 5x, that'll be 5. So 4 times x is 4x, 3 times 5 is 15. Now, 4x and 15 are not common denominators. So, I mean, not common denominators. They're not like terms. Sorry about that. 4x and 15 are not like terms. So, I cannot add them together. So, that numerator is just going to be 4x plus 15. And they have 5x in our denominator. In order for them to be like terms, then, you know, you have to have 4x plus 15x, something like that. Both of them have to have x's involved or not have x's involved. But if one has, the, has an x, the other one doesn't, then I cannot add them together.
All right, we'll do one more before we move to the next section. So here the LCD knows that this is this is X and this is X times X. So all I have to do is multiply the first denominator by X and I will have X squared. So we'll let that LCD be X squared. And so when I go over here, uh, yeah, I'm just leave it like that. I'll multiply top and bottom here of that first fraction by X and leave the next fraction um, alone. So now I have 7X over X squared minus 3 over X squared. And 7x and 3 cannot be combined. So that'll be 7x minus 3 over the x squared. All right, any questions before we look at mixed numbers? All right, so whenever multiplying fractions, or I won't say fractions, mixed numbers, multiplying or dividing, first thing you want to do is convert them to improper fractions. All right. So we're going to take the 7 times 2, add 1, so 7, your new, the whole number times your denominator, add it to your numerator. Same thing here, 4 times 3 plus 2, and in each case you keep the same denominator. So that's 15 over 2 times 14 over 3. All right. Now, um, as I mentioned in the previous lectures, uh, previous lecture about multiplying fractions, it would be your benefit to uh, get the practice of canceling first and then um, multiplying, reducing, then multiplying versus trying to multiply and then reduce. Because uh, once I multiply four, 15 times 14, it may not be as familiar to me as I would like for it to be. Wherein uh, looking at 15, 
is a more manageable number. That's three times five. 14 is two times seven. Oh, this should be a three. And so now I can cancel what's in common with the top and bottom, no matter where it is, as long as all of my fractions are being multiplied. So the twos cancel. Oh, no, I lost my screen. Okay. So the twos cancel. Then my threes cancel. So that's 5 times 7 on top, which is 35. 1 times 1 on bottom. The answer is 35. Why did the 2s and 3s cancel? Um, because of the principle of 3 over 3 is just equal to 1. And so that's what you have here, 3 over 3. Because it's all multiplication. All of this is going to stay in your numerator. All of these are going to be in your denominator. So once you multiply across, that's still going to be the same thing. 15 times 14, that result will stay, still be in your numerator. 2 times 3, that result, result will still be in your denominator. So what they're saying was when you're multiplying your fractions, you can go ahead and cancel out first before you do the multiplication. And that will allow you to deal with smaller numbers, especially when you're doing it by hand. So the idea of 3 over 3 canceling out is basically saying 3 over 3 is equal to 1. All right, hold on. Let's see somebody. So you right, right. So you simplify before you multiply. Mm -hmm. So now if you decide to go ahead and multiply and then simplify, then feel free, you will still get the same answer. Your answer will still be 35. It's just that, once again, 15 times 14, most people can't run, you know, run that off and just say it you know, off the top of their head. So you may be dealing with an unfamiliar number when it may take you even longer to simplify, when initially all you had was a 15 and a 14. And you know 15 is 3 times 5, 14 is 2 times 7. All right, I see your hand. Pinching up. <laughs> Um, so like if you divide 14 divided by three, you're going to get the wrong answer. Well, what's going to happen is you're going to get a run on decimal. See that 14 divided by three. Yeah, that's 4.5. Yeah. 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 That's 4.6 repeated. So, um, you may lose the integrity of your fraction because at some point, let's say if you're writing it down by hand, uh, let me go back to my notes. So if you do. 14 over 4.6. So at some point, because you're not, you know, a computer, you're going to have to cut that off. You're going to have to truncate that. So now it's possible you may not get the even 35. You may get something close to it. No, I just misread it. I thought it was 14 over 2. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay. Well, you know what? I made a mistake at one point and put a 2, and then I erased it and put the 3 back. So you might have you might have caught me when I put that two up there. So maybe that's uh, okay. I, I I'll take the blame for this one. <laughs> All right, questions, questions, questions. Before we uh, go to another one, try another one. All right, let's go negative twelve times one and seven ninths. All right, so just like before, well, we know we can recognize 12 is 12 over 1. That 1 is 7 ninths. Going to convert to an improper fraction. So it's going to be 1 times 9 over 7. So that's 16 over 9. All right, so that 12 is 
3 times 4, 16. I mean, I can break it down if I like. There's nothing in the denominator that will break down for us. But that 9 is 3 times 3. So I can cancel out the 3s. Now, don't forget, like I just said, that 4, if I'm, dry, if I'm trying to cancel out a 4, it has to be in the top and bottom. I can't have 4s in all of the top and then try to cancel out stuff. One has to be in the top and the other one has to be in the bottom. So since I only have them in the top, I can't cancel out anything. So it's going to be negative 64 over 3. Also, you pay attention to the directions. If the directions ask for you to write your answer as a mixed number, then, of course, you have to keep going. You can't leave it as negative 64 over 3. I think in this section specifically, it says write your answer as mixed numbers because they're focusing on mixed numbers. Outside of this section, though, I don't believe it asks you to do it. But let's go ahead and knock that out. So you set up your long division. Three goes into six, two times. So two times three is six. That cancels out completely, but you drop down your four. Three goes into four one time. One times three is three, gives you a remainder of one. So either way you write the answer is that it'd be 21 remainder of what you were dividing by 21 and one third. Right. Let's look at dividing. So seven and, and a half divided by four and two thirds. Once again, you want to convert to improper fractions first. So the first one, seven times two plus one. Second one, four times three plus two. So that's 15 over two, 14 over three. Now we're going to divide fractions. We hold true to what we've done in the past. Division change to multiplication. Then you flip the fractions accordingly, or flip the fraction that follows the division sign. If you were to break down your numbers, you will see that nothing can cancel. So, so nothing cancels, so you multiply across. So 3 times 15 is 45, 
2 times 14, 28. Yeah, messed that up again. All right, so let's make sure, and not make sure, let's go ahead and convert it to a mixed number. Do 28, and we're going to divide that into the 45. Twenty eight goes into forty five one time. So we have a remainder of seventeen. So that's one and seventeen over twenty eight. Both of those equal the same thing. All right, so we'll do at least one more before we look at adding and subtracting. So negative six divided by negative five over and one seventh. Once again, negative five and one seventh. Convert that to a mixed number uh, and fraction, sorry. All right, so 5 times 7 plus 1 over 7 be 36 over 7. So that's negative 6 divided by negative 36 over 7. That would be negative 6 times negative 7 over 36. Thirty six is six times six. So one of those sixes will cancel. Also, don't forget negative to a negative. It's positive. So those will cancel. And my result would be seven over six. All right, so 6 goes into 7 one time. 7 minus 6, 1 times 6 is 6. 7 minus 6 is 1. So that's it for that. So you have 1 and 1, 6 as your mixed number. Any questions? All right, so
All right. So let's look at adding and subtracting them. So the directions for a few of these is to estimate and then find the actual sum. So we'll talk about uh, how we do that. All right, so Can you read number two? Compare the result to the numerator. So yeah, so to estimate mixed numbers, it says take half of the denominator, compare the result to the numerator, if the numerator is less than half of the denominator, the whole number the same. And if the numerator greater than or equal to half of the denominator. All right, so if the numerator is less than half of the denominator, leave the whole number the same. If the numerator is greater than or equal to half of the denominator, add one to the whole number. Uh, 
give you guys a chance to write it down and then we'll try it out. So let's look at 42 and 1 over 12. So if you're looking at 42 and 1 over 12, half of the denominator is 6. Uh, All right, so half of the denominator is six, and since since the one, and we're looking at the numerator, since one is less than six, you keep it at forty two. Half of the denominator here is 4. Since 7 is greater than. Four. Add 1 to 17. So it's going to be. Plus 18. So that would be your estimation, 60. All right. So before we questions on how we would estimate. So we want to find the actual sum. First thing we need is a LCD. Remember, we're ever going to add your fractions. You need your least common denominator. Smallest number that both 12 and 8 can divide into evenly. That's going to be 24. So you say what times 12 will give me 24? That'll be 2. And what times 8 will give me 24? That'll be 3. Now that we have common denominators, we can go ahead and add them together. 42 plus 17 is 59. 2 plus 21 is 23. So this is our estimation. That's 60. And then our actual sum is 59 and 23 24 
All right, questions on that one before we do another one? Okay, let's try it out again. All right, so we want to do our estimation and then find the exact value or the actual value again. So we're going to do our estimation. Half of our denominator is 3. I'm going to compare the 5 to 3. Since 5 is greater than 3, 7 will go to 8. That 5 is greater than 3. So that takes my 7 up. My denominator is 2.5. That 3 is greater than 2.5, so 3 will go to 4. So my estimate or my estimation, estimated value is 12. So now if we want to find the actual value, I want to uh, add these another way. Last time, if we go back to what we looked at or how we added them before, we left them as mixed numbers. This time, I'm going to go convert them to improper fractions. That way may help you um, with least amount of work, especially when it comes to subtracting fractions and not having to borrow. So. Um, we can convert these to improper fractions, just like we did with uh, multiplication and division. Doing seven times six plus five, three times five plus three. That'd be 47 over six. Eighteen over five. So my LCD is going to be 30. Smallest number that both 6 and 5 can divide until evenly. So I'm going to multiply up and bottom of this first fraction by 5. You say what times 6 will give you 30 and that's 5. So 30 is down bottom. 5 times 7 is 35, carrier 3, 5 times 4 is 20, so that's 23. And what times 5 will give you 30? That will be 6. That's 30 on bottom, 108 on top. Add them together, that's four, oh, not four. 
343, 430. And to convert it to a mixed number, 30 goes into three no times, but it goes into 34 one time. Subtract, that's four. Bring down three. 30 goes into 43 one more time. And that's 13. I don't know why I'm going to read it. So that would be 11 and 13 over 30. All right, let's do a couple of subtraction problems and then um, should be good to go as far as this section is concerned. So like I said, when it comes to, um, especially when it comes to subtracting mixed numbers, it may be in your best interest to convert them to improper fractions first. Um, because sometimes you may have to borrow, but you won't have to borrow if you convert them to improper fractions with the way they set up these problems. Um, you will not have to borrow if you convert them to improper fractions. So we'll go ahead and keep with that. 10 times 5, and we're just doing the actual actual differences now. 10 times 5 is 50 plus 2 be 52. 4 times 4 16 plus 3 that would be 19. LCD would be 20, smallest number that 5 and 4 can divide into evenly. So we want our denominator to be 20, so we'll multiply both top and bottom here by 4. So that would be 208 over 20. And here we'll multiply top and bottom by 5. Uh, now we can subtract twenty. Minus, uh, not 20, but 208 minus that 95 should be 113 over 20. All right, so converting it back to a mixed number, 20 doesn't go into 1, doesn't go into 11, but it goes into 113 
five times five times 20 is 100 it gives you a remainder of 13 35 13 20 is. All right, let's do at least one more. Let's go four minus two, five eighths. So four, of course, that's a fraction is four over one. Two and five eighths would be two times plus eight over eight so that's ten plus eight which is eighteen over eight and so that's eighteen over eight oh I know y'all hear it hold on one second <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. So we got four over one minus 18 over eight. Need a common denominator. LC is equal to eight. So we multiply top and bottom by eight. That's 32 over eight minus 18 over eight. Should be fourteen over eight. All right. Let me make sure I do the thing right in time. Oh, you know what? I just looked at some. I did something wrong. Y'all let me. It's all y'all fault. All right, so I should have done right here. I should have done uh, two times eight plus five. So it shouldn't be 18 plus So two times eight is 16 plus five is 21. So sorry about that again. So that 18, it's not 18. So now 32 minus 21 is 11. I was wondering why I could reduce throughout the whole thing. I was like, anyways. All right, so it's 11 over 8. Take the 8 into 11, goes one time, gives you a remainder of 3. So that's 1 and 3 eighths. Mm -hmm. Questions on 
anything. So uh, make sure you try the stuff out. See if you get stuck um, or anything. I would bring those to class and we can talk about them. Or if you just need to get through them through, before the weekend is out, shoot me an email. See if I can help you out there. Um, don't forget, if you decide to make an attempt on a test, I don't think we've finished lecture as far as tests are concerned. But if you decide to make an attempt on a test, um, make sure that once you do your submission, whatever you're saying is your submission, that you uh, shoot me a copy of your scratch work for your test. So that was uh, something that I said in one of the videos. Yes, Ms. James? Yes. Um. So will you take off plants? Like, do you grade, like, how our work is? Because some of my other teachers, they do that, where they take off points if you don't do your work a certain way. Do you do well, that? it's not. No, it's not about doing it a certain way because I know with math um, you can do problems. Like I just showed you different ways to um, uh, calculate, add and subtract and mix numbers. So I'm not really stuck on the way as long as what you did was correct. You know, um, if you did it, if your if your mathematics or your or your, or your process is correct, and I, I don't, I'm not really hung up on how you did it because there's always different ways to do different things. So. Yeah, yeah. I have one more question. Yep. So am I also able to for like eleven over eight? Can I so basically eleven eleven over eight is just how many times can eight go into eleven, right? Mm-hmm. So am I able to just do that instead of the other work? So now what what do you mean? Do you want to write as a decimal or what when you say the other work? Like if it depends on how many times eight can go into eleven. So since mm -hmm. eight can go into eleven one time, that's like that's the um whole number on the mm -hmm. side, right? Right. So right. can I do that? Yeah. So for you know, for ones that are small, if you end up, you know, um if you can do it without doing much work, then I understand that. But certain ones are gonna, you know, gonna pull on you on your on your brain strings a little bit, you know what I mean? So yeah. for the ones that I know that you, you should have had some work for. That's the one that I'm, I'm really looking for that work, you know. Um, so, yeah, I can understand why you could see 11 over 8 and just write the answer down. So that, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Yep. No problem. All right. Anything else? Anybody else before we close out? All right. Ms. James, is that another question? No. Sorry. Okay. Oh, no. It's a problem. Not a problem at all. All right. So if everybody's good, I'm good. Um, I will see you on next week. Have a great weekend and be safe. Thank you. All right. No problem. Thank you. Everybody take care.